This is Mike from Minimal 3D P, and today I'm just doing a quick Orca Slicer video related to a question I got on one of my Orca Slicer tutorial videos. If you're interested in those, I'll link above to that playlist. But the question was basically, I like Orca Slicer, but my supports are holding on too tightly and damaging my model. What can I do? I can't say that all solutions are the same, but here are, here are some settings I'd look at changing and what I would do. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now to me, it's usually easier to work with this type of stuff, particularly in a video. We use a model all of us are familiar with. Most of us should be familiar with the Benchy. And I've taken this Benchy and put it at a 45 degree angle. So if I go over, work a slicer and I turn on, let's say tree supports, and hit slice plate, that looks, again, what we'd expect. Better yet, let's switch this over. Let's do normal supports. Slice the plate. And you can see it. And it makes sense what's there. But again, if these supports are holding on too tightly, what do we do? How do we need to change that? So let's take a look at least some of the settings I look at messing with and give those a try. So for right now, I've switched back to tree supports and I just want to show you this. So if I slice my plate and go down through here, I believe what we're going to find is the interface pattern right now looks like it's perpendicular to the model, which potentially is the same direction as the model, meaning that the layers that are interfacing with the model basically are going the same direction. And potentially it's better if they don't go the same direction. And so one thing we can change is we can change the pattern angle. So if I change the pattern angle, when I hit slice, Let's look all the way at the bottom. You can see how this is now at an angle, so there's no way this is necessarily going the same direction as my benchy. So again, that interface angle of your pattern isn't necessarily going the same direction as your model. So if you have the layers are going two different directions, you're not necessarily going to get pull as much off, and it should should break apart easier. That's one setting you can look at changing is that pattern angle. Now, one of the changes that definitely will help is right here at this top Z distance. Top Z distance, depending on your printer, it's going to be set to, in my case, 0.15. Maybe I want to up that to 2. I do on, I'd up it by 0 0.05 at a time. So let's change that to two. And what that should do, and I'll leave my angle there at 30, is that should change how things are interfacing together at the top. So that should change how this layer right here is touching. The bigger that distance, the easier I found your support will remove. But then again, that might be this surface isn't quite as, doesn't look as decent. So there's a fine balance between having too big a, a topsy distance and too little. I usually try to play around with this as in and around between 0.2 and 0.3. Again, the higher it is, the easier I found it's to remove the support, but also maybe the support doesn't do quite as good a job. Maybe that bottom surface under this model would be a little bit rougher. So again, that's something to play around with. Lastly, you can play around with these base patterns, the rectilinear and down here, the interface pattern, the grid. I've used grid. I think that's one I would recommend 
is just using that grid interface. I think that's, I've read particularly in Cure, it's a little bit better. Now you can't see it quite as well with tree support, what the, the interface looks like. Let's switch over and look at this as normal support. Run this again. As I come down, you should maybe be able to see that that's actually a grid as it's touching. So you can try, try grid and see how that works and see if that interface works a little bit better. Like I said, I've read and my experience has been that particularly with Cura, that grid pattern's a little bit better. Like I said, this is one of those areas where you have, probably have to play around with it some. I'm going to switch over to my desk camera. I went ahead and printed this model with tree support. Let's just look at two different methods. I have it set as 0.15 interface, the uh, Z distance, and then I have one done at three. And so let's look at what the differences between those two are. So I have my two different models here. This one was done at 0.3. This one's at, I think, 0.15. I'm going to apologize. These are a little stringy. I'm using older filament. I do the 0.1. The supports are a little tight. So again, they're a little harder to get off and rest on them a little bit. And I mean, that's not bad, but you can see the little rough on the bottom here. Now let's do this other one. And it's hard to tell if these are coming off any easier. Let's look at the bottoms of these. Yeah, I can see the letters there, but again, it's still a little rough. Maybe this one, the point three, the bottom's a little rougher. Again, that's part of that's the supports a little further away. Otherwise, the model, now again, a little fuzzy. I have some string because again, the film, it needs to be dried. But I think I'm not really seeing that big a difference. So it, it, in this case, I didn't get that maybe the supports were a little bit easier to do on the point three. I think the point one though, the bottom looks a little bit better quality. Again, just something to think about. I'm not really sure this is the ideal way to do the support, but those are the settings you're going to need to look at. One of the things, and I, I probably definitely look at, is changing that top Z distance. I'd look at changing the pattern angle. And then lastly, I'd maybe look at that interface pattern and try switching that over to grid and seeing how those affect your model. Probably want to try and test these with a smaller model. That way you can do a couple different iterations and see what works for you. I realize this wasn't super informative. It's just and something to give you some ideas on what I would look at and maybe how I would fix the problem. But again, hopefully that helps. Feel free to leave questions and comments below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. As you can see, if you have a question, I'll, in some case, I'll try to answer with a video. I hope you have a good night. Thanks again. Hope to talk to you Hi, soon. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.